I'd like to both thank and welcome the Assistant Secretary of Education, Office of Vocational and Adult Education, U.S. Department of Education, Dr. Brenda Dan Messier. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It's wonderful to see you. Thank you very much, Leanne, for that very kind introduction. And for those of you who were able to attend the banquet last night, it was such a treat to have my boss, Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. He also here and talked to the members. He also met with the board of directors to discuss our administration's priorities. And they had, frankly, a very lively discussion. The secretary asked me to thank all of you in this room for your dedication and commitment. And if you don't know this already, you should. The secretary strongly, strongly supports all of your work. I'm pleased to be here with you today. Yes, that's right, we should clap. In fact, um, I emailed him last night to thank him again for being at the banquet. And he wrote back to me right away and said, we need to do more of this. And I said, we certainly will. I'm pleased to be with you all here today to take part in the opening of the 2013 ACTE Career Tech Vision Conference. And Leanne, thank you again for inviting me, because I always appreciate an opportunity to be with you so that I can formally thank each and every one of you for your tireless leadership and effort on behalf of our nation's career and technical education students. I also want to take a moment and thank Leanne, your new ACTE Executive Director, for stepping up to take over the leadership of your organization. Please join me in showing our appreciation for Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. Last week, Leanne uh, and I met along with Kim Green from the uh, State Directors Association and our staff, and we agreed that we would meet quarterly because as Leanne mentioned in her remarks, it is vitally important for all of us to seize this moment and all work together to promote high quality career and technical education all across our country. I also want to thank the ACTE staff for orchestrating yet another wonderful conference here in Las Vegas for administrators, teachers, faculty, business and industry representatives, researchers, and other key stakeholders to share the latest information and best practices in career and technical education. And I want to take this moment to recognize and thank the outstanding OVE staff who are here in attendance. Would Sharon Miller and her staff please stand so we can thank you for all of your great work. Sharon, Albert, Margaret, thank you. I hope you'll have an opportunity to attend their sessions or otherwise connect with them so you can hear about the many exciting national initiatives we have underway in the department. In my brief remarks this morning, I want to provide four updates for you. First, I again want you to know how much this administration supports you and your work. In addition to Secretary Duncan attending the banquet and meeting the board, we went to visit East Career Tech Academy here in Nevada, where he was, that's right, congratulations, and thank you for hosting us. It was a wonderful visit. He toured the school, talked to the students, talked to administrators, and then conducted a town hall with business and industry leaders, some students, a principal, and uh, the superintendent. And he saw again firsthand the importance of high quality CTE. And every time he comes away from visiting a career in technical education program or school, he always comes away with a profound respect for the work that each and every one of you do. So keep those invitations coming, and we'll try to make sure that the secretary gets out to visit many of your programs. Second, this administration supports high school redesign. In the President's 2013 State of the Union Address, 
the president laid out a bold new vision for America's high schools, proposing funding to scale up innovative high school models and partnerships with colleges and employers so that all students graduate better equipped for the demands of a high-tech economy. To that end, the U.S. Department of Labor, in collaboration with the U.S. Department of Education, is making $100 million available for Youth Career Connect grants to provide high, high school students with industry-relevant education and skills they need for a successful future. I encourage all of you to learn more about these grants, but more importantly, to consider applying by visiting the Department of Labor's website at www.doleta.gov. The money is available now, and you should begin your applications as soon as you leave Las Vegas. Our administration supports efforts to also make college more affordable and of the highest value. Last month, the President announced an ambitious new agenda to combat rising college costs, make college more affordable, and improve value for students and their families. Over the coming months, the administration is holding a series of public sessions to gather input on how to promote college affordability while ensuring equal access for disadvantaged students. I'm delighted to hold one such session here today to be sure that your views representing career and technical education are part of the feedback that the department receives. Finally, the administration continues its commitment to reauthorizing the Perkins legislation, which is a primary source of federal funding for career and technical education. We remain committed to the four key principles and related reforms contained in the blueprint for Perkins reauthorization that the Secretary released April 2012. These principles are effective alignment between CTE and labor market needs to equip students with the skills they need for in-demand jobs within high-growth industry sectors, strong collaborations among secondary and post-secondary institutions, employers, and industry partners to improve the quality of CTE programs, meaningful accountability for improving academic outcomes and building technical and employability skills in CTE programs. And fourth, emphasis on innovation by promoting systemic reforms in state policies and practices that will support the implementation of effective CTE practices at the local level. We are delighted, as Leanne mentioned, that the House Committee on Education and the Workforce has begun hearings on Perkins reauthorization. I want to give kudos to Brian Albright from Gateway Technical College, Blake Flanders from the Kansas Board of Regents, and Stan Littow from IBM, who joined me at the latest hearing on November 23rd. They truly represented you and all of the hard work that each of you do every day so eloquently in that session. That's right. I wish you all the best for a lively and productive conference and look forward to seeing you in my travels during the upcoming year. Thank you. <laughs>